Hi, how's it going? If you ever want to spot trains of all shapes and forms, probably your ideal place to travel would be Japan. And if you are interested in Japanese trains, you certainly know about the Shinkansen, also known as bullet train overseas. However, part of the success of these fast trains comes from the testing of some experimental rolling stock that are not always really heard of. Today, as to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Shinkansen, we would like to show you some of these experimental models that broke high-speed records in Japan during the 90s. Come along from Kyoto Station to Maibara. The weather is not quite welcoming, but we can still spot these three pieces of railway history through the window as we approach our destination. Welcome to Maibara, a small city with a population of roughly 38,000. Most of the Shinkansen services don't even stop here. We can also see other types of trains such as freight trains and this cute little train bound to Shigaraki operated by a private company. After a 5 minutes walk from the station, we arrive at the Railway Technical Research Institute, where these three record-breaking test vehicles, now retired, can be seen through the fence. It is a place I wanted to visit from long ago. Thank you, random man who didn't mind stopping from his way for a second when I asked him to take me this picture. Now, let's briefly talk about each of these vehicles, shall we? Starting from our left, we have the class 955 Car 1, also known as 300X. Built in 1994 for pure testing purposes, it reached a top speed of 443 km an hour the 26th of July 1996, becoming the fastest train running on the Japanese rails, excluding the maglev, and the second fastest train in the world behind the French TGV that had reached a top speed of 515 km an hour on May 1990. The other end car of the train was preserved at JR Tokai Hamamatsu factory until it was moved to the Linear Railway Museum at Nagoya in 2011. Here's a picture I got at the museum in 2017. As you can see, the other front is quite different, as the goal of these experiments was to test the most suitable shape to reduce noise at high speed. Unlike the TGV speed test previously mentioned, 300X had to run on the already existing Tokaido Shinkansen line, which featured more hills and tight curves. The experiment had to be carried out by JR Central on the section of the track between Kyoto and Maibara, since it offered the most gentle curve radius. As it is not a large distance, the acceleration had to be increased to achieve such great speed in a short amount of time. Therefore, all bogies were powered. To reduce air resistance, the body height was reduced, with all equipment such as air conditioner and other system being located underneath to both lower the center of gravity and to keep the surface as smooth as possible, leaving just pantographs on the exterior. With all that combined with the skills of the driver, the train even exceeded the 440 km an hour expected to reach. As an evolution of the 300 series, this model served for the later development of the 700 series. Just before 300X achieved its record, STAR 21, which stands for Super Train for Advanced Railway towards the 21st century, reached a top speed of 425 km an hour on the 21st of December 1993. JR East decided to test this train on the Jōetsu Shinkansen line between Nagaoka and Niigata, since this section of the track has a gentler curve radius and there are no tunnels that increase air resistance. Nonetheless, the overhead wires of the track had to be renewed to stunt speeds over 300 km an hour, and measures to prevent ballast from scattering had to be taken. Star 21 was a 9-car train set in which 4 cars belonged to the class 952 and the remaining 5 to the class 953. Having this second half shared bogies between cars, also known as Jacob bogies, made Star 21 the first and only Japanese Shinkansen up until now to ever have this type of bogies, at least on one half of the train set. The project gained attention across the world, with the former German company Mann helping on the development of the bogies. So as to reach higher output power, another powered bogey was included. A pantograph was placed on the leading car facing Tokyo, now removed, and the same wheel slide protection techniques used for 300X were incorporated. After some several attempts, 
it set a national record with 100 members from the press on board. Any higher speed would have resulted in risk of derailment. The leading car on that test run, alongside with one of the intermediate car, is preserved at JR East Shinkansen General Rolling Stock Sansai Miyagi. The knowledge gathered from this experimental model would be used for the development of the Shinkansen E1 and E2 series. Traveling further in time, we finally have Wing 350, which stands for West Japan Railways Innovation for Operation at 350 km an hour. It was planned to be the first of the 500 series Shinkansen. JR West, finding themselves in the need of competing against domestic airline services, started testing with this 6 cars train prototype that was intended to be lengthened up to 16 cars after the experiment period. However, the end design of the 500 series resulted to be so different that Wing 350 was retired before the mass production of its successor. The purpose of this model was to see the efficiency of a train running at 350 km an hour, the fastest train in Japan at the time. The same techniques of lowering the body height and keeping the surface sober later used by 300X were implemented in order to reduce air resistance. In this case, only the minimum amount of windows needed were built to help in this purpose. There were changes in the placement of the pantographs along the train. The pantograph design also evolved from the diamond shape to a single arm manufactured by German company Siemens. Despite this latter being more silent, the negative lift at high speeds made this design unstable, resulting in the development of a characteristic wing-shaped single road pantograph used later by the 500 series. The pantograph covers also suffered modifications getting to the extremes of this long slopes construction. Still, it was not enough to comply with the environmental regulations regarding noise as the pantograph kept being a major source of sound. For that reason, alongside measures that would have to be taken in case of a potential earthquake, the Sanyo Shinkansen maintains a speed limit of 300 km an hour. The other end car of this prototype, the 50906, with a slightly different nose shape, was kept at JR West Hakata General Vehicle Depot. Sadly for the fans, it started being scrapped in March 2024. Despite being the first and slowest of the three, Win 350 seems to have had the most popularity. As a fun fact to mention, official toys from the famous Puraren brand together with the N-Gage toys have been sold. On the contrary, 300X only got official Puraren toys and Star 21 didn't have any of them. As it is to be expected, few seats were actually built inside these trains as most of the inner space was used for data collecting equipment. It is also worth mentioning that light materials have been utilized to reduce weight, as it has been the case for many high-speed trains in Japan, making them lighter than most of their western counterparts. Now, the question that many people would be asking. If such incredible speeds were achieved 30 years ago, why the speed limit for commercial services is still so low in comparison? For the most part, the country's topography is to be blamed. Beside the many tight curves, there are many tunnels across the tracks. Because the tunnels were not built too wide to reduce construction budget, at high speeds, micro-pressure waves create noise that go against the environmental regulations as so many portions of the tracks run near residential areas. Such change in pressure also affects the structure of the vehicle in the long run. To deal with it, newer models have a longer noise, sometimes to the extreme of the current experimental Shinkansen Alpha X that JR East is testing to operate trains at 360 km an hour in the future. A worker of the facility told me the institute opened its doors and lets people have a closer look and even enter the cars on an event that takes place a couple of days a year during October, although the information regarding which exact days that happens is not quite easy access. Truth it is that I would like to go closer to them, but having the chance to see them so well preserved from the other side of the fence has been enough for me. I'm afraid if trains like this were left in the exterior anywhere in Europe, it wouldn't take long until they appear all painted on graffiti. Time to take one last glimpse of this marvelous place. 
As for the rest of the city, there's apparently no much more to visit, so to kill the remaining time I had, I decided to walk towards Lake Biwa, an ancient lake, in fact the largest freshwater lake in Japan. The other side can barely be seen on the horizon. Well, it is getting time to return to the train station and continue my trip. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one. Bye.